Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm one of the librarians here at the library and I'm here to talk to you about background reading. We're going to talk about why you need to do background reading and then we're going to talk about how you can do background reading. So first, why? Why do you need to do background reading? Uh, this is probably, most people love to skip this step of research, right? It's just, it's not a fun, uh, fun-filled research moment, but it's really important to do background reading. Here's why. First of all, you need to explore your topic a little bit so that you can even come up with terms to do really efficient research on your topic. If you don't understand your topic, if you don't know when the person that you're researching lived or when was the war that you're looking into, if you don't know basic things like that, you are going to struggle mightily in the scholarly databases trying to find research results for your topic. Um, also, as you do background reading, it really helps you either broaden your topic or narrow your topic. It gives you a good idea of how much is involved with your topic. Do you need to make it smaller? Do you need to make it bigger? Because um, it's not going to be enough. So it helps you determine the scope of your research as you're going along. Of course, and I mentioned this briefly before, you really need to already have identified the important names, dates, and terms, right? What words are used to describe your topic? What terms commonly come up when people are um, discussing your topic? Those are important things to know before you start your official research in the library catalog or in any of our databases. And finally, background reading can actually give you uh, can get you right into bibliographies and lists of sources. And you can actually sometimes jump into those lists, pick out a source that looks really good and go find that source, you know? So it's almost like it can be like a little, here you go, a little cheat sheet on, here's good sources on your topic, go and find one of these. Uh, so that can be really time saving. And I often help students and, and that's the way we jump right in to finding the more scholarly articles. So how can you do background reading? Um, you can start with your history textbook if your topic is covered in your text for this class, that's really helpful. We have encyclopedias in the library that cover all of these topics. So um, we have print encyclopedias, but most of our encyclopedias are actually e-encyclopedias. And you'll find on this guide, you'll find a link to individual e-encyclopedias that you can explore your topic in. Wikipedia is also a good resource to use at this point when you're just exploring your topic and trying to, to get a handle on what's involved with your topic. And you can also use a Google search at this point um, also to try to find sources out there that are readable and will help you understand your topic better. My caution with Wikipedia and the Google search, of course, is you have to evaluate what you're finding very carefully. So it, it does add a layer for you in terms of trying to figure out, is this a credible, is this a good Wikipedia article? Is this a credible source that I found through Google that's giving me this information? Uh, whereas textbooks and encyclopedias, you don't have to add that layer, you don't have to utilize that layer at all. So finally, if you run into any problems with background reading or you're trying to figure out how to do it better, and you need some help with it, um, you can always go to this URL and ask a librarian. So you can chat with us, you can email us, you can text us questions, or you can make an appointment for um, more help after that. So good luck and let us know if you have any questions.